Hello and welcome to Raven Mystic. Me and Cassandra here are going to have a going to do a slightly more relaxed format of video where we have a chat about our personal experiences within witchcraft and magic, the occult, and share a bit of insight um, about each other and have a more relaxed format. We had a few questions from um, some of our lovely uh, friends who have been watching our videos. Thank you so much for your support, by the way. Um, and it's really nice to get questions from you guys um, because it helps us to generate the sort of um, community feeling, which is what we're trying to create here as a community. So if you have any questions um, or anything that you, you are curious about or any advice that you need, just contact us either put a, a comment um, or contact us on social media. We absolutely love the interaction between you guys. This is not just us talking about us for the sake of it. It's us talking about our experiences to hopefully help you guys, to help people um, and, you know, share share the experience of, of using witchcraft, um, what it's really like to be a witch um, or to be an occult practitioner. Um, and so the Raven Mystic community, um, it's getting stronger, it's yeah. growing, and we're so happy about that for you guys. You know, we just want to help as many people as we possibly can. So right off the top of the bat, we just want to say, please uh, like, subscribe, share as much of our material as you possibly can. Um, let's help as many people as we can, and let's create a really good community. So one of the questions that we were asked was um, how did we get started in witchcraft? How did it all begin for us? Um, so Max, I'm, I'm going to pose that question to you. Okay. Um, my, well, I didn't personally start um, practicing deeply or um, doing uh, ritual work on my own until my mid-teens. Mm -hmm. But um, the concepts and the ideas of magic have been part of my life for, well, as long as I can remember really. I was uh, lucky enough to have um, two fantastic women who raised me, uh, who were both very much in tune with uh, magic and the occult, and I started learning at that young age. Uh, so when I started coming to it when I was a teenager, um, a lot of it made sense and things clicked. like. Oh, I remember that from a story I was told when I was five or oh, so cool. elements like that. And I was like, oh, okay, this is really cool. It's like yeah. rediscovering it, relearning it, which yeah, was awesome. really, really nice and mm. was um, felt so, so for you then, it, your home life as a child, it wasn't hidden from you. It, it wasn't, you know, kind of hush-hush or no, it was just getting... openly discussed, openly talked about. Oh, definitely. I mean... Looking back, there were there's so many little cool things that I I almost forgot about. Um, I had like a protective charm written in Anglo-Saxon runes around my door frame that was put in by my mother. Um, we got taken around to all the old stone circles, sacred sites uh, when we were very very young, which is something we're we're trying to do with uh, the kids now. So, what was it like for you as a child? going to those places did you did you just run around and climb on stuff and just that was what if you were allowed to and it, were you just playing were you sort of in your kind of fantasy mind and like you know the way children kind of make up a story behind something or were you connecting to the energy there were you really aware of where you were was it explained to you about the history of those places the, the history was definitely explained and the significance um of them some I have stronger members, memories than other. Um, I will try and remember the name of this place and put it in a comment afterwards. But we went to a uh, hill fort, an Iron Age hill fort, not far outside of Brighton. And I remember going there and vividly seeing a, I think it was an Iron Age battle, or it was a, it was a battle against uh, Roman soldiers, against the, um, the people that were inhabiting it at the time. And it was so, so vivid and I previously had no history or knowledge of this place and later on finding out that you know, that had actually happened yeah. there which was a really really cool experience and I yeah. must have been I was 
10 at the oldest at that time. That's, you know, that kind of experience is something that I want to do a whole show about. Mm. Because when you, when you experience stuff and then later find out that that's real, like it's confirmed to you in some way, especially as a child. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't want to detract from what you're saying now no, or, of or go not. off tangent now. But that's definitely something that I want to share with the community because I mm. know other people have had the same experiences. You know, like, oh, I saw a battle or I saw um, the history of a certain location and then later found out that that was the truth. That's, yeah. Or I saw an energy or a, um, a being and later found out that that being does exist, um, which is something that we, we want to talk about so much because so many people ask us, oh, I think I saw this or I've, I've experienced this and it seems really weird. Mm. And we're just like, that's not weird. Like that. yeah, those that's, those that's are real normal. and they exist and it's okay. To it's see it's, it's that part of the, the human experience. Yeah, we are yeah. as much a part of the magical world as anything you might read about or like mm, the fey mm. folk. We've just, we seem to have lost our connection. We've become too invested in the physical. We've become the detached. world as yeah. well. Yeah. Anyway, so you had that experience yes, of seeing the yeah. battle. Uh, so things like that. Um, uh, I think my first, no, there was, a, there was another one. Um, this is something that my, um, my, one of my mothers um, still has. Um, we were, we were on a beach somewhere, but I found a very large piece of flint, but yay big, with a perfect hollow in, and she still uses it on her altar as a chalice, Aww, like 20, scary, it, yeah. if not more years later. Yeah. That's very cool. So the elements of that is still still very much around, and it's, it was lovely. Mm, mm. So growing up, you, it was just normal for you. Yeah, it was it was it was normal, and um, sometimes it did result in being treated differently by certain people. Um, right. Uh, school friends. Yeah, sc school school yeah. friends, and some people I might might meet would be. Um, maybe judgmental or mm -hmm. not aware and maybe mm -hmm. scared which is mm -hmm. some things that a lot of people yeah. nowadays experience because mm -hmm. you have a lot of uh, mm -hmm. negative media about it but there's also much more positive now mm -hmm. but um but yeah so when i was certainly at a young age i would speak about it openly and calmly right. um mm -hmm. and it was you sort of go through that that period where you're you know, sort of 12 11 trying to fit in in teenage years yeah. and i got to about 15 and went I'm weird, I'm going to embrace it and just... <laughs> yeah, you get to that point where you have to just, just get, accept and embrace it. I, I, yeah. I've had enough, I'm not going to be normal, so... Good! I, I really love that. I, and, you know, it scares me, the thought of trying to be normal and fit in. Yeah. So so what about you? Um, how, how did you start? Um, kind of the opposite way to you. So, um, my... From ever since I can remember, I was always able to speak to spirits and communicate with spirit energies, but they weren't all nice. And so from a very, very young age, I learned to protect myself. And some of it was taught to me by other spirits, and some of it was just instinctual. Um, things like visualization techniques mm. and ways to look after myself. Um, and I think that's really where it kind of all started, was I, I was seeing things that as a child, I just accepted. Yeah. And then there was a period of time where, you know, when you sort of hit sort of, I don't know, like six or seven years old, and the kids around you are saying, well, Santa Claus isn't real, and the tooth fairy isn't real, and you start to doubt what you're seeing and experiencing. Mm. You start thinking, is it my imagination? Is it just what I, I've dreamed up or, or what I've imagined around me? Despite, quite substantial proof to the contrary I still doubted myself um, and I realized that I could see things that other kids couldn't see because I was responding to things and you know spirits were, were talking to me and nobody else would react to the fact that there's somebody weird in the classroom or something strange is going on so for me it, it stemmed from that it stemmed from an awareness of a world that existed in amongst our world that other people were not acknowledging and that's where it kind of, I, you know, right from the start, right from the beginning of realising that other people couldn't see what I could see, that's when I started to, to go, what is this? Mm. What, you know, what, what is going on here? I never felt 
I never felt special because of it. I never felt, I've never used the word gifted because I think everybody has the ability to, to connect with this world, to connect with these energies. Yeah. Everybody does. But for some reason, it just came naturally to me. I'm an only child and my parents didn't have, they were quite scared actually mm. of anything like that. Um, although later on in my life, I found that my granddad on my mum's side used to do automatic writing and that there is a kind of a spiritual feeling down both sides of my family, my father's side of the family. I found out much, much later when I was um, with my dad that he could see things and sense things, but he never spoke about it until I was well into my 20s. Never hinted at it, never mentioned it. Perhaps he was scared. So, you know, and they would both say, don't meddle, don't get involved in that kind of thing. Mm. But um, when I was about nine or 10, I started to go to the library before the internet. It's like I'm old. Um, before the internet, I'd go to the library and I'd take out every single book I could on witchcraft, the paranormal, ghosts. I was fascinated by the fact that in the books, I found other people that were talking about the things that I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, nobody, no one that I knew, friends, relatives, nothing, nobody spoke about it. Nobody was willing to kind of, you know, be open about it. Everybody just closed up and was scared. Mm. And that's not from a religious background either, necessarily. No, it's, it's just from people being scared. So for me, I had the opposite experience of you, where everybody was open about it and talking about it and doing these things. I felt very different and very mm. excluded and very... Um, it just felt so different to everyone. As a kid, I didn't play with other kids. I didn't... I felt like an adult already because I knew of things that other kids didn't know about i i grew up really really fast and really young um and so didn't really have a kind of childhood in that yeah i went out sometimes with friends and played but it wasn't something i wanted to do i was kind of pushed out you know go out and play because everything was going on there was so much information coming in from the energies and you know i'd see a, a huge sort of you know i, I might see a, a huge energy or entity or elemental or whatever it was and my poor friend next to me who's nine years old i can't i can't say to them by the way there's this great big being here you know what i mean like you, you can't like you can't say that to someone without making them freak out and they'll get scared and i didn't want to scare my friends and yeah so so teenage years for me was the same as you yeah i guess i was I was bullied because I had, I was having prophetic dreams and I you know all this kind of stuff was going on and my friends were scared of me and they you know they didn't like it and so I had to keep it all in mm -hmm. so it, it was really really hard um, but in terms of witchcraft I I've been learning from books from age nine doing things that I shouldn't have been doing um, and I look back on it now and I just think that's it's crazy that I was attempting that stuff. Certainly at that age. Not knowing are. the dangers, certainly that age as well. Um, and it was a, a spirit who came to me into my room one night, um, a lady that came in and she said, you have to stop what you're doing right now. This is ridiculous and dangerous. And, you know, I won't go into detail, but I was far too young. Um, and luckily that spirit kind of took me under her wing and she said, come with me, I'm going to teach you... Um, some real witchcraft, some, you know, some, this is what it's really all about. Real magic. And so I kind of went off with her in, in my mind's eye, went off with her and she would visit every night and just kind of take me in, in my mind's eye and teach me stuff. Um, so that was my first experience of learning witchcraft and, um, yeah, it kind of, kind of started there. Yeah, it's very, very cool. It's, uh, it's strange how two people from such a different backgrounds, um, yeah. Will, will join together. Um, the other question we had um, was, check the notes, <laughs> how do we work together? How do we work together? I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> I love that question because... Um, we both use different systems. We're different. We're, we are different. We're both... I don't really refer to myself as a witch very often. I'm a mm. Kabbalist. So... For me, it's more ceremonial um, and more about what I place around me with the power of my mind and, and visualization and creating energy around me. Whereas, Max, you are about creating an environment yeah. and the kind of, you know, physical items, 
but yeah, putting the physical item below Very that. much so. I mean, there's a, there's a great term in uh, some of the Pratchett books, which is called headology, <laughs> which is if it looks right, <laughs> then it's got that energy. Yeah. Um, I know that sounds a little bit very, very simplified, but um, mm. certainly when I'm working in my ritual space, I will set up something that looks very, very uh, fantastic, very, very large and over the top, maybe. But um, that helps me get into that state of mind. That that makes me um, really go uh, all in with uh, with working, and, and I find that's really useful. Um, I don't have anything against that. Mm. You know, it's nice for me that you're so creative and so visually. Uh, it's important for you to have that visual. Yeah stimulation of those objects and those things and creating an environment it's nice for me to walk into that and just go oh this is nice you know this is <laughs> this is nice it's really cute you know this is really this is really i can feel the energy and whatever but i when i set up an altar it's very basic you know it's it's northeast southwest and from that just from those simple points i build up all of the imagery in my mind which completely surrounds me with imagery on all sides top bottom left right you know all the corners everything is filled with imagery in some way whether it's a symbol a hebrew letter or a tarot card or whatever it is i'm completely surrounded by the energy that i've been taught to put there mm. uh, that that you know you put yourself in this magical space uh, and you create this magical space and you, you know maybe casting a circle might be a good sort of analogy yeah. to it um well, that's basically what you're doing if that makes yeah, sense yeah 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 so it's nice that you you're putting the physical things there. Yeah. In my mind, there's twice as much stuff there because it's what you put there, and what I, you know, unfortunately, mine's all in the ethereal. Um, yeah. Well, you you have no earth in your birth chart. You are. No, and that that could be that could be part of it, but I think it's from sort of age nineteen I started looking into the the symbolistic side of witchcraft and. Mm and parts of Kabbalah started to edge their way into my consciousness at, at that age, probably earlier. Um, so, it, yeah, it's not just the fact that I don't have any earth, and I, it's not that I can't be bothered. Because, no, no, you know, I would never, I, I never would, mean that. Like, but... You know, but it's just not how I was taught. It's not how I learned. Yeah. I learned that it's, if you're, if you're somewhere and you need to cast magic and you need to do something, it's no good for me. Like, I travel light. I don't really, I try oh, to. Well. <laughs> I, have a, I have a lady's handbag, just like every other lady does. Um, but no, I, I, I'd like to know that I can create that without having to pull out candles, amulets, oh, a chalice, a, and a thing, you know, all that yeah. stuff. It doesn't, I don't need all of that. I can do it without. And uh, quite early on, I, you know, I was attracted to the kind of, oh, I'm going to get a necklace that has a one of the Hebrew names of God on it. I still, I still have that. But to create the energy and to feel the energy, I realised that even when I wasn't wearing it, yeah, it was still there. I mean, it's so I don't need to wear all the jewellery and have all the symbology on me, and you know, I don't need to do that. And so I think that's there's a point of power in that. Yeah, but, definitely. But people definitely. choose to do that, and that's fine. If that's what they want to do, because I, I understand it. I've been there. So, so when we do things like amulets and stuff like that. Mm. It's interesting and it's it's strengthening and it gives you a focus, but you don't necessarily need to have those things. Definitely, I mean, it's I mean while I I would still practice quickly or anything like that, but it's for if we're doing a ritual for something say like a large change or something like that, which mm -hmm. is when I would like to set up these large spaces yeah. for day to day magic, it's it's not required. Yeah. But if you're trying to bring round a large change, I'd like to set up mm. something like that. And, and, you know, since you threw out there that I have no earth, <laughs> Max is a Libra and so he's all about the aesthetic. So that it fits. You know, it's it fair fits enough. with what you do, so that's too shit. Weird Aquarius. But it's, good. But it, but it's fine. <laughs> you know, that's the thing, it works. we work together. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, it, it's something that people might think that it would stop them working together mm. or they might think that oh you know one person is a cabalist and another person is a witch or one person is a hedge witch and another person is a different type of witch or whatever they can't work together it's not true no, you it's use it to, to work together and to get your um 
you're working with the same the same energies yeah. uh, through different paths. So mm. you were saying about night nine teens when you first started coming across Kabbalah. Mm. At that age, I was um, just starting to coming coming across the use of herbs and plants and roots and resins. Um, at that age, where I started learning it. Mm. Um, so that's God. That's a few years now. It's over a decade. Yeah. <laughs> which is worrying. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it's so we, we so we do create when we work together. We create an altar space. We cast a circle, but we do it together. And yeah. I do my bits and Max does his bits and it just works. Yeah. I mean, actually we, we sort of, um, when we first met and we started really first talking about it, you know, and I was kind of saying, oh, I always face east and this is how I do think there, there's a little bit of kind of, oh, you know, I'm happy to accept the way that Max does things, the way that he creates things. And it's great to add that to my working. And yeah. I imagine you feel the same. Oh, I hope you feel the same. I, I definitely do. I definitely do. Um, I'll admit I tried looking into uh, Kabbalah at, um, in years past, before I met you. And there's so much contradictory information in various places, or it's half bits, or it's, mm -hmm. say, a simple phrase expecting you to know it all already. There's not, there's not very many good source books, or there weren't at the time. Mm. So it was something that I was aware of and had a very faint idea of yeah. but didn't dive into because i couldn't find anything reliable sure yeah mm -hmm. um which actually will bring us quite nicely onto our power tip oh what's our power tip read the notes <laughs> this is really you've got the notes <laughs> well the power tip was what would you have loved to have known when oh, you were starting? Yeah. And have you got any books you'd recommend for someone who's in their early days or something that's a, a great one to pick up and that might go over the basics, but it's got some real gems in there as well? Um, got her. I, ha <laughs> <laughs> I have no answer for this. Um, I, well, I, I probably would say actually just investigate as much as you can so look into everything but don't get overwhelmed with all of the information so I you know when I'm teaching I always say to my students go and investigate this don't take my word for it don't just believe me because I said it go out and investigate how does it feel for you does it work for you um, you know I know what I believe and I know what I've been taught however your path is your path and I'm guiding you along it but it's your path ultimately so um, for me, it, you know, if I take an example of something that didn't work for me was <coughs> Wicca. Mm. Now, people are happy practicing Wicca and that's mm. fine. If that suits them, that's great. But mm. it doesn't fit with what feels right for me. Yeah. It simply doesn't feel right, a lot of it. So, you know, I looked into it didn't didn't gel with it didn't couldn't grasp it didn't you know I was kind of like well that's not what I've been taught that's not how I feel that doesn't feel quite right so therefore that's not the path for me so my advice to people is investigate go ahead and you know look into different paths look into different ways of working it's all so different definitely um, and the best piece of information that I think anybody can have on this path is your own astrological birth chart genuinely you know you that is like your fingerprint it's it's absolutely just your thing it's who you are it's how you work it's the energy that you're made up of and not necessarily as a tool for seeing the future but a tool for knowing yourself um a hundred percent that's the best thing i think mm. the best resource for Definitely. anybody because you can then say okay this is my weakness this is my strength I'm either going to accept my weakness as it is, or I'm going to work on it. And that's how you move forward with your practices. And, and people make leaps and bounds once they've got that information. Mm. You know, and people say to me, oh, that's why I'm the way I am. And, you know, and I can kind of go, that's yeah, actually, That's why I'm it's a terrible okay. person. <laughs> <laughs> so then you have the choice. Do you want to change yeah. or do you want to just carry on and accept the way it's okay? Like, there are no rights and wrongs. So that's my, that's my recommendation. Cool. For cool um for myself is like you say 
research. Look at different systems. I tried various different systems uh, throughout developing to the stage where I am. My first experiences were using things like Anglo-Saxon runes, which was a real screw up in the head when I learned about the Elder Thor's Ark when I was about 12 and I read my first book on it and it confused the hell out of me because there's less letters and there's, <laughs> they have different meanings. Um, <clears throat> so do you think you always stick with the way that you originally learned or do you...? I, I've combined a lot of the information uh, but certainly if I'm doing something like a bind rune I will still use the Anglo-Saxon rune right. because it's actually got, it's, it's a bit more expanded. Yeah. Um, okay. But the energy is very similar. Um, as I was saying, is look at different systems. Um, I even had a period where I went into uh, something called Chaos Magic, uh, and there are some very good books there. But then again, Chaos Magic is magic. It's, chaotic. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's chaotic, which magic in its own principle is. Um, but certainly, it was a really useful way of breaking down the system and being able to go, okay, that's that technique, that's that technique. And it sort of was a really nice way of going, almost looking like the blueprints of it. And you go, oh, okay, that's quite cool. Um, then at about 19, I would, I was looking at um, books like The Call of the Horned Piper, which is a really, it's a short book, but really, really good to start you on things like traditional witchcraft. Mm. So have a look at those ones. Um, is this something, so the question was, is there something that you wish you'd known when you'd started that you know now? Don't bother with fluffy people. Um, or don't be afraid of looking at both sides of the coin. Far too often, witchcraft, magic, and the occult can be watered down to love and light, pure, you know, just... So a one-sided point a one, of view. A one-sided yeah. point of view yeah. that, that can be, you know, whether it's solely goddess worship as opposed to the male, or just solely male worship as opposed to the goddess. Mm -hmm. It's finding that balance and being able to understand that for every action you do, there's an equal, equal and opposite reaction, and for every time you light a candle, you cast a shadow. and being aware of that and going does this require my energy do i feel like i need to expend my time with this scenario or this situation and not to be so guided by your emotions when it comes to magic and witchcraft and use more of the the logical mind if that makes sense rather than going oh something's not right i'll do a way, spell for it and not, and not acting on it, if that right. makes sense. So the way that I would teach that is to not react to every tiny thing that's going on. Just yeah. cut the drama and don't react. Yeah, be careful where you put your energy. Yeah. Is it worth wasting your energy? And and actually, when you the further you go and the more of a wider world lifetime view you have, mm. it puts things into perspective. Yeah. So, you know, you might be all screwed up about oh my god, I've got this job interview going on, oh my god, you, and it totally consumes you, mm. or a relationship problem that completely consumes you, and you forget the bigger picture, you forget that you're here for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, yeah. and this little glitch in your life is temporary. Will you remember this next week? Will you remember this next month? Will you remember this next year? You know, how much are you going to let this thing affect you? And is that where you should be putting your energy? Exactly. Deep stuff. That's deep. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Uh, Is that it? Highly professional here. <laughs> Extensive notes. It? I don't know. Because <laughs> I think there's a shopping list on the other side of it. <laughs> uh, no. No, that's all good. Wonderful. <laughs> we too have shopping lists. Yes. <laughs> I have new chips. No, um, thank you very very much for if you've stuck around this long and listened to us babble um you'll probably have noticed this is why we script a lot of our videos because we will just go off on tangents for so long yeah but 
it's nice to sit down and be able to have a chat and talk to you guys and let us know if you have any more questions or if you've experienced anything like we have. Yeah, um, please. We, we really want to create this community and it's a safe place for you to comment, to share, to, you know, if there are people that you know that would benefit from seeing this, please share it. It's all about creating a community where it's safe to talk about this stuff, yeah. um, you know, and it's a, it's a passion of ours, but we want to help as many people as we possibly yeah. can. I, I can honestly say it's genuinely lovely when, you know, we look and we go, oh, we've got some interaction. This is really, really cool. We've yeah. got the, the, the someone who actually goes, there's someone who's actually listening to us weirdos. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> yes, it helps us. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, so, yeah. it's, it's our form of therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching guys um take care and we'll speak to you soon goodbye